Hello students, welcome back to my channel. In the class 2, I have given an equation why the stem has to be modified into a flower. So the answer is very simple. It is just for adaptation purpose. We have seen adaptation is one of the important property of all living organisms. Even in case of flowering plants, the stem is modified for the adaptation in order to adjust to the changing environmental condition. And in the previous class, we have discussed about the microsporogenesis in a simple manner. Let us talk about the microsporogenesis in a, a detailed manner. Then what is microsporogenesis? The microsporogenesis is the but the process of formation of microspores. The process of formation of microspores from the microspore mother cell by meiotic division within the microsporangium of the anther is called as microsporogenesis. So the thing, this is uh, the definition that I have, I have given in the previous class. But how the microspores will be formed? In the previous class only I told you at, uh, in the end anther. When the anther is in end condition, one of the hypodermal cell. Hypodermal cell is nothing but. See, this is uh, the epidermal layer. Below the epidermis, uh, what the layer is present, it is called as a hypodermis. Even here, one of the primary hypodermal cell. That primary hypodermal cell is called as an archesporial cell. The primary hypodermal cell is called as archesporial cell. This archesporial cell, it divides mitotically. It divides mitotically resulting in the formation of two types of cells one is called as primary parietal cell primary parietal cell the, and the other one is called as primary sporogenous cell so this archaeosporial cell which divides mitotically resulting in the formation of two types of cells namely primary parietal cell and primary sporogenous cell. This is a primary parietal cell. For example, if this is the archaeosporial cell, this archaeosporial cell divides to form two types of cells, namely one is primary parietal cell and the other one is called as primary sporogenous cell. This is a primary parietal cell which later develops into or gives rise to all the four layers of the anther wall. So the anther wall, the four layers of the anther wall are usually developed from the primary parietal cell and this is primary sporogenous cell. So within the microsporangium, we can find the presence of sporogenous tissue. Each sporogenous cell later develops into microspore mother cell. Each sporogenous cell develops into microspore mother cell which can also be called as a pollen mother cell. And already I told you, the mother cells are usually diploid in nature, even the microspore mother cell is also diploid in nature. And this microspore mother cell usually undergoes a meiotic cell division. You know that meiotic cell division is a reduction of cell division, which is usually resulting in the formation of four haploid micros microspores. So when this microspore mother cell undergoes meiotic division, here also it is resulting in the formation of four haploid microspores. But these four haploid microspores are arranged like a cluster. That's why it is called as a microspore tetrad. So why it is called microspore tetrad? Because all the microspores are arranged like a cluster. Hence it is called as microspore tetrad. Then how these microspores, all the four, four microspores will be get separated? So at the time, at this time, I told you while explaining the functions of tapetum. Tapetum, it produces many enzymes. In that one of the important enzymes called as caries. Usually these microspore tetra, the microspores are attached together with the callos, with the presence of callos. But in order to separate the microspores, the enzyme produced by the tapetum called as callase, it helps in dissolution of callose which is present in between the microspores. So after the formation of microspore tetrad, the tapetum will produce a callase enzyme. That callase enzyme will dissolve the callose that is present between the microspores so that all the four microspores gets separated and you cannot 
terms, uh, the four half plot microspores are formed by the meiotic cell division that is happened to the microspore mother cell. And here you can clearly understand that I told you the process of formation of microspores from microspore mother cell by meiotic cell division that takes place within the microsporangia that is called as a microsporogenesis. I think now it is clear about microsporogenesis. Later, what happened to these microspores? The microspores will later develop into pollen grains and pollen grain is the male gametophyte or which is the first cell of gametophyte in generation. So this pollen grain, we will talk about the pollen grain later. I think it is very clear about the microsporogenesis, the process of formation of microspores. And how these microspores gets, the, gets developed into pollen grain? See, in this microspore, you should remember, these are haploid microspores which contain haploid nucleus. And each microspore which contain nucleus along with cytoplasm and cytoplasm is surrounded by a prominent plasma membrane. A prominent plasma membrane. Outside the plasma membrane, the pollen grain will secrete three important layers which are called as exome and intime. So then only it is called as a pollen grain. Before that, we will call it as microspore. Now we will talk about the pollen grain in detail. Yeah, as I said, the pollen grain it is the male gametophyte, which is the first cell of the gametophyting generation. Here, look at the pollen grain. So how the pollen will be appears like? For example, if you touch a opened anther of the hibiscus or any other flower, you can observe a powdery, yellowish powdery uh, pollen grains are attached to your fingers. You just sprinkle those pollen grains on a clean glass lid, having a drop of water and just observe under the microscope, you will be wondered, you will be wondered because of their variation. We can observe a different varieties of pollen grains, variety can be seen in case of their size, number, color, everything we can find out when we observe under the microscope. Then when we study the structure of pollen grain, each pollen grain, I told you, each pollen grain contains a nucleus along with the cytoplasm and cytoplasm is surrounded by a prominent plasma membrane. Then outside the plasma membrane, we can find the two layers of the pollen grain. Actually, the wall or covering of the pollen grain is called as sporoderm. The wall or covering of the pollen grain is called as sporoderm, which is usually a two layer. Then which are the two important layers of the pollen grain? It is very, very important. Even the structure of pollen grain can be expected in the examination so that uh, try to understand clearly the wall or covering of the pollen grain is called as sporoda, which is usually a two layer. The one is called as exine, and the other one is called as intine. So, this one actually, this intine, when you observe the intine, the intine is usually thin, smooth, and it is a continuous layer which is made up of cellular. The chemical composition of the two layers is very very important. Here the intine layer which is the inner layer. The intine is a inner, thin and continuous layer which is mainly made up of cellulose and pectin. Then when you observe the outer layer, the outer layer is called as exile which is, which is usually hard, thick and it is usually discontinuous layer and it is mainly made up of sporopollenin. It is made up of sporopollenin. So this sporopollenin you already heard while explaining, I have explained about the functions of tapetum. So this sporopollenin is one of the highly resistant organic material. So here exine which is usually made up of sporopollenin. Then why it is called as a discontinuous layer? You can observe somewhere the exome is absent or sporopollenin is absent. That exact region is called as germ pore. In the structure of, uh, in the structure of pore on grain, we 
can label it as enzyme, enzyme. And what is this germ core means? Germ core is the region where the sporopollenin is not deposited, or the exile is usually absent. And you should remember, exile is made up of a highly resistant organic material called as sporopollenin. Then why it is called as a highly resistant? Do you know this sporopollenin can withstand high temperature, acidic conditions, and even alkaline conditions? And another important thing, no enzyme can degrade this sporopollenin. Till now, there is no enzyme which can able to degrade the sporopollenin, such a highly resistant organic material which is called sporopollenin, and only enzyme is made up of sporopollenin, whereas the enzyme is made up of cellulose and pectin. Do you know these polymers can be preserved as fossils? You may be heard about the fossils, or fossilization, etc. So these can be preserved for several years together, mainly because of the highly resistant organic material called as sporopollenin. So this is the structure of the pollen grain. So this is usually called as one cell pollen grain because you can observe only one cell, which is the male gametophyte or pollen grain. I will repeat a few points of this pollen grain. Pollen grain usually contains nucleus, cytoplasm, which is surrounded by a plasma membrane. Then outside the plasma membrane, there are two important layers. The inner layer is called as enzyme, which is a thin, smooth, and continuous layer, mainly made up of cellulose and pectin. Then the outer layer is very hard and thick. It is also it is made up of a sporopollenin, one of the important highly resistant organic material called as sporopollenin. Why it is highly resistant? Because it can withstand high temperature, acidic conditions, alkaline conditions, and no enzyme can deal with this sporopollenin. And this pollen grain, when the anther gets matured, when this anther gets matured, the pollen grain will divide mitotically, resulting in the formation of two cells. Let us see how it becomes a two-celled pollen grain. Just you observe this one. If it undergoes mitotic division, you already know that mitosis includes both karyokinesis as well as cytokinesis. Even here, first karyokinesis occurs. This nucleus will divide to form two nucleus. So this is pollen grain. It divides mitotically. Initially, karyokinesis occurs. That means the division of nucleus takes place, resulting in the formation of two nuclei. Then karyokinesis is followed by cytokinesis, so that here there is a formation of cell wall. Here there is a wall formation occurs. Now you can observe the two-celled pollen grain. Actually, here the mitotic cell division is an unequal cell division. That's why resulting in the formation of two unequal cells. You can clearly observe here the larger cell is called as a vegetative cell, which can also be called as a tube cell. The larger cell is called as vegetative cell or tube cell, which contain usually a larger set, a larger nucleus and more amount of cell plasma. And the smaller one, the smaller cell is usually a smaller and spindle shaped cell. Smaller and spindle shaped cell which is called as a generative cell. Which is called generative cell. So the larger cell is called as a vegetative cell can also be called as a tube cell. And this smaller spindle shaped cell is called as generative cell. Even the generative cell also contains a nucleus as well as a more amount of cytoplasm. So now it is called as a two-celled pollen grain. In most of the angiosperms, in most of the angiosperms, about 60% of the angiosperms, these pollen grains will be shed at two-celled stage. I mean to say, in this stage only, the pollen grains will be shed. So how the shedding of pollen grains will be taking place? Already I told you, when this anther gets matured, when the anther gets matured, the endothelium will undergo contraction so that in this region, the rupturing of the anther takes place. Whatever the pollen grains are present here, they will come out of the anther. It is called the of the anther, leading to the 
release of pollen grains. So usually in about 60% of the angiosperms, the pollen grains will shed at two cell stage, which means they contain a vegetative cell and a generative cell. But in remaining about 40% of the angiosperms, these pollen grains will shed at a three cell stage. But where are the three cells here? So in such a cases, if the pollen grains will be shedding at three cell stage, here this generative nucleus again divides one more time. So here the generative cell or generative nucleus will divide, for example, so this is the generative cell or the generative nucleus. So this generative nucleus divides resulting in the formation of two nucleus again which are surrounded by cytoplasm so that resulting in the formation of two main gametes. You should know this, usually there are two male gametes in case of flowering plants and how these two male gametes are formed means the generative cell which is the smaller spindle shaped cell which divides to form two male gametes. So these are the two male gametes, two cells and the other one vegetative cell all together it is called as a three cell stage. That's why I told you in a majority of the cases the pollen grains will shed at two, two cell stage and in remaining 40% of the angiosperms the pollen grains will shed at a three cell stage. Then I told you here there will be a formation of pollen tube. So when the pollen tube will be formed usually after the release of these pollen grains where these pollen grains will go? What happened to these pollen grains? These pollen grains will usually land onto the stigma that I will explain later. So later they will produce a pollen tube. One thing here, how the pollen tube will be developed? I told you this poropollenin is highly resistant. No enzyme can degrade. Then how the pollen tube will be formed? So here no confusion. The pollen tube will be emerging from the germ pore. So at the region of germ pore, poropollenin is absent and this in time, the in time only develops into a pollen tube which will be emerging from any one of the germ pore. Try to understand, the in time layer only develops as a pollen tube and from any one of the germ pore, this is how the pollen germination will be taking place that you will be studying in you will be studied in detail even in your practical class. So this is about the structure of pollen grain. So structure of pollen grain which is usually a two layered enzyme and in time enzyme is made up of poropollenin, in time is made up of cellulose and pectin. Initially it will contain two cells uh, that is a vegetative cell and generative cell that is a two cell pollen grain. If the generative cell divides to form two male gametes then it is called as a three cell pollen grain. So now this is a three cell pollen grain. So that is the structure of pollen grain, very very important. In the next class we will talk about